This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The California Angels faced the Washington Senators at RFK Stadium for a Wednesday night game on June 2nd, 1971. California was an average team, which was a common occurrence in each of their 11 years as a franchise. They were coached by Lefty Phillips in what would be his final season with the Angels. This was the second version of the Washington Senators, having expanded as a new team in 1961 after the original Senators moved to become the Minnesota Twins the year before. The Senators were coached by Hall of Famer Ted Williams, but the team was a train wreck with very little young talent, lots of old stars, and washed-up free agents like Frank Howard, Denny McLean, and Kurt Flood. They had perennially lost 90 or 100 games before giving Ted Williams a shot as a manager. He turned the team into a winning program in 1969, but his managing style didn't fit well with the players, and they quickly fell back to their losing ways. This audio recording is from the California radio broadcast, featuring announcers Dick Emberg and Don Wells. batting order reads this way. Roger Oppose will be in center field. Alex Johnson in left field batting second. Jim Fergusi at short. Jim Spencer will be at first base. Spencer at first batting fourth. Ken McMullen at third. Tony Canigliaro in right field. Tony C in right batting sixth. John Stevenson will do the catching. Stevenson behind the plate. Sandy Alomar at second. And the pitcher Clyde Wright. And quickly for the Senators. Danny McLean has already worked his few warm-up tosses. Toby Harrell will be at short. Elliot Maddox in center. Frank Howard at first base. Dick Billings in left field batting fourth. Larry Bittner will be in right field. Paul Casanova will do the catching in bat six. Don Wirt will be at third base. Tim Cullen at second base. Cullen at second, batting eighth. And the pitcher, Denny McLean. So the Angels and the Senators complete complete it all here this evening and right now here's Dick. Thank you Don. Good evening everybody. The first pitch of the game is fouled back on the screen by Repose. Strike one. Danny McLean. Certainly the headline maker during the winter when he was traded here at World Series time in that startling deal that involved the entire left side of the Washington infield Rodriguez and Brinkman going to Detroit. This one is swung on a pop fly back a short. Out goes Hera. In comes the left fielder Billings. He wants it and Billings has got it for the first half. Repo started tonight with a 250 average. Here's Alex Johnson batting 258. Alex has a modest seven game hitting streak. He'll be followed by Jim Fregosi. McLean 4 and 8 with a 4.05 ERA. 13 and 8 lifetime against the Angels. First pitch is a strike. Fastball inside corner. Danny with that characteristic high kick. Broad-shouldered, stocky right-hander. Winds, one strike delivery. High, fastball, one and one. As the lights have not taken their full effect, McLean may choose to stick more with his fastball early. He rocks into motion the one-one pitch. Outside with a breaking ball, first one he's thrown. Two and one. Catcher Casanova, Wirt Hera, Cullen Howard on the infield, Billings, Maddox, and Bittner in the outfield. The pitch, low, three and one. McLean pauses a moment as Johnson backs out. Now they're set. Three one pitch. Swung on, slice, fly ball, back of first. Howard with a long run in foul territory. Can't get there. It's back a couple of rows down in the right field corner. Three and two to Alex Johnson. Star for the Senators last night, Elliot Maddox with a game-winning three-run home run out in center field. He had some interesting comments after the game last night. He roomed with Alex's brother, Ron Johnson, at the University of Michigan. The pitch, slider outside, ball four. Johnson walks, and with one out, here's shortstop Jim Fregosi. Frank Howard will hold on Alex Johnson. Fred Koenig reminds A.J. one away. Rocky Bridges threw a series of signs down at third. And Jim Spencer on deck. Fregosi hitting 226. Throw to first and Johnson is back. Just seems as if the whole infield is leaning toward Frank Howard when he's positioned there. The pitch, 
Swung on and sliced back foul. Deep into the lower deck to the right. McLean with the two big years back to back in 68 and 69. In the Tigers' pennant winning season, 68, he was 31 and 6, and the next year, 24 and 9. And then last year, with all his troubles, 3 and 5. The pitch swung on, pop fly behind home plate. Casanova whips the mask away. He's under it, and on the warning track, makes the catch. Fergosi fouls out to the catcher, two away. Johnson at first base, and here's first baseman Jim Spencer. It's interesting to hear Ted on his own pregame show, a five-minute broadcast before the Washington Ball Games tonight, and he was asked about the Angel Ball Club and how he analyzed uh, their situation, and he talked of hitting balance, having right and left-handed power in the lineup, so by McLean out in time to scare Johnson at all. And he said, when you have all right-handed hitters, as was the case when the season began with the Angels except for Jim Spencer, then you have to figure Spencer's going to hit big. The pitch outside and low with a fastball. And when he has trouble getting his hit, then that really causes troubles. And as has been the case, Leslie Phillips has had to go to a more platoon system getting left-handed hitters like Stevenson and uh, repose in the lineup. The Angels hope that Spencer with his good swing, and Williams commented upon just that, that he feels that Spencer is one of the bright young hitters in this league, will get going. Swung on a drive to right field. It's hit well down in the corner. Right fielder Bittner deep in the corner. And he makes the catch as he crosses into foul territory. The ball died down in front of the 335 sign. Spencer fouls deep to right. The Angels leave a man in a hitless first inning. And after a half, Angels nothing. Washington coming to bat. John Stevenson. Stevenson throws through to the second baseman, Sandy Alomar, then to Fregosi and McMullen, and on to the pitcher. Jim Spencer at first base. Outfield Johnson in left, repose and center. Tony Canigliero in right field. Shortstop Toby Hera in the number one spot in the batting order tonight. He has a seven-game hitting streak. He's batting 242. Hera, just 22 years old. He and Larry Bittner have been very impressive, the two youngsters in the Washington lineup in this series. Right into the windup, his first pitch. Fastball outside, ball one. Hera, Maddox, and Howard, as Williams juggles his lineup to get a lot of right-handed batters in against Clyde Wright. Angel Southpaw winds, kicks, here it comes. High and away, ball two. The flag atop the Double Deck Stadium here in Washington is blowing in a bit. Right winds. The 2 all pitch. Taken all away. Ball three. Hera bluffing a bunt to try to disturb the concentration of Clyde Wright. And he falls behind the leadoff man 3-0. and all. Right into the windup. Left-hander delivers. All the way, taken for a strike. Fastball aimed down the middle, three and one to Hera. So bothers not to look at third base coach Wayne Terwilliger, so apparently he's taking three and one as well. Nellie Fox coaching at first for the net. Three one pitch. Oh, he was swinging and he fouled it away. That'll be over the senator dugout on the first base side. Three and two to Toby Hera. A 
yesterday it was clear and low humidity. Today, uh, hazy overcast and it's most typical Washington August high humidity heat. Good pitching weather. The 3-2 pitch. Outside with a fastball and here a walk. Lead off man on for the Senators. Here's Elliot Maddox who hit his first home run as a Senator last night and it came with two men on base against Dave LaRoche and proved to be an insurmountable lead for the Senators at the time as it gave them a 6-2 advantage. The Angels got three runs in the eighth and had the tying run at third and only one out in the ninth but could not force the Senators to come to bat in the bottom of the ninth. Harrow with a good lead. Right staring at him, delivers. Fastball for a strike. Outside corner. Infield looking for a double play chance. Maddox, along with uh, Don Wirt, came to the Senators with Denny McLean in that trade with Detroit. Throw to first base. And it's not close enough for a tag by Spencer. Norm McRae, a pitcher, was the other acquisition. With Coleman, Brinkman, and Rodriguez, and Hannon going to Detroit. This one is lined into right field for a base hit. Hannah on his horse is around second. Up of the ball is Canigliaro, and Hannah. Uh, Hera has to put on the brakes and go back to second base as Tony sees fast fielding, holds the Senators' lead runner. But Maddox on a curveball, off balance, just shot the ball to right field, and here comes the big guy, Frank Howard, with runners at first and second. And no one out in the first inning. Howard playing first base tonight. He's hitting 293, best of any of the regular Washington players. He has six home runs, leads in that department, 19 runs batted in. Howard had a couple of base hits last night, a single and a double. Shift is on, uh, not quite as drastic with runners at second and first. The pitch. Curve way outside, ball one. Alomar is playing behind second base on the edge of the grass. Fregosi midway between second and third, and McMullen hugging the line deep at third base. Outfield very deep and swung toward left field. Runners at second and first, no one out, the pitch. Outside with a fastball, 2-0. and oh. Right involved in an early jam there with the leadoff walk and Maddox with a single to right field. Occupy second and first. No one out and 2-0 and oh the count on Howard. Right set. Double checks the pitch. Strike. Fastball taken by Howard. He kept it away from Frank. Howard called the strongest baseball player that Ted Williams has ever seen. He has to be the biggest in the major league. 6-7 and about 280. The 2-1 pitch. Low. Three balls and a strike. On deck, young Dick Billings, right-handed hitter. Here from second. Maddox from first base. They have their lead. A big pitch, 3-1. Howard swinging if he likes it. Here it comes. He takes low, ball four. The Senators have the bases loaded against Clyde Wright in the first inning. On two walks and a single. And here's Dick Billings, the left fielder, batting 283. Another of the Senator youngsters. Although he does not have the youth that the 22-year-old Hera enjoys or Bittner on deck at 24. He's a graduate of Michigan State, and he is 28 years old, right-handed batter. With Denver last year, he hit 305, 15 home runs. Right pitch, low, ball one. Here at third, Maddox at second, Howard at first. No one out, send it to first inning, no score. And Washington with a chance to take the early advantage. Enfield playing back. They'll give up a run for a chance at a double play. Pickoff move at second, and they don't get him, and the throw gets away. Here comes the runner, Hera. He scores. Fregosi picks up the ball behind his position at shortstop. 
But he had a good chance at Maddox as Alomar slipped in from second base. But the throw hit Maddox and ricocheted behind Fregosi out at the deep shortstop. And Hera alertly sped in from third with the first run of the game. Wright is charged with an error. And the Senators, on two walks, a single, and an air, have a run without an out recorded yet. Maddox stayed at second, Howard at first. Good heady play by Hera. He was ready to go as soon as the ball got away. Did not hesitate. Right delivered. Swung on, a bouncer to short. Fregosi goes to second for one, Alomar to first, not in time. Safe on the field of choice is Billings. Howard a race, 6-4. And Maddox moves to third. One nothing Senators. Runners to third and first. One out. And right fielder Larry Bittner, who has been on a tear the last week, is a hitter. Left-handed batter. First baseman sent into the outfield by Ted Williams. Bittner has a six-game streak in which he has 12 hits in the six games. And is batting 571. Overall, since being uh, recalled from Denver, his average is 394. Runners lead from the corners. Right delivers. Strike. Fastball knee high. Again, the infield. Playing back for the double play. Spencer holding the runner at first base. Dick Billings. On deck, Paul Casanova, the catcher. Right set. Here's the pitch. Curve inside. One and one. Didn't break much. And Billings waiting for it to break. Almost waited too long. Nearly hit him. Field, playing Billings straight away and giving him both lines. Tony C. way off the line and right, not expecting him to pull. Maddox from third, Billings from first. The pitch swung on and missed. Fastball sinking and the count one and two. The Senators, who had an atrocious month of May, Getting June off to the right start after closing out May with a win. 4 nothing against the Angels on Memorial Day and winning last night 6-5. They get a one nothing lead early tonight. Fastball low, 2-2 two and two to Bittner. The Angels, meanwhile, winning only two and losing five on this road trip, now find themselves ten and a half games behind Oakland and in a tie with Milwaukee for fourth place, just a game and a half in front of Chicago. The Senators are nine and a half behind Boston and Baltimore at the beginning of play tonight. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and missed. And for the first time in the series, Bittner did not look good. Wright had him fooled. Kept the ball low and got him on low fastball. One strikeout for Clyde Wright to come to the big spot. And here's Paul Casanova hitting 235. The Nats can't get the run on the out. Infield can move back a little deeper. Maddox still at third and Billings at first. A run in, a couple of walks, a single, and an error in the first inning. Right from the stretch, looks at Billings, the pitch. Swung on, bounce to the right side. Alomar has to charge the ball. His hurried throw in time to get Casanova, and Wright pitches out of it. One run on one hit, one error, and two left. And after one, the Washington Senators won the California Angels nothing. A word now from Continental Airlines about promises, because keeping promises is a big thing at Continental. Continental promises you a coach or economy seat as wide as first class, and they guarantee it. They're all that wide, you know, on all of Continental 707 and all their 727 Sanchez. Maybe some airlines promise you a wide seat, and you just find it doesn't happen to be available on the particular flight you're on. Or some airlines will promise a handy table that folds down over the middle seat, but then somebody comes and sits in that seat. Well, that's reason enough for specifying Continental Airlines every time you fly. Because at Continental, keeping promises is a matter of pride. And they promise you a coach or economy seat as wide as first class, and they guarantee it. Call Continental, or call their partner in getting things done for you, your travel agent. Fly Continental Airlines, a proud bird with a golden tail. One nothing Washington, top of the second. Ken McMullen leads it off for the Angels. Mack, who celebrated his 29th birthday last night with a home run and an RBI single, is hitting 245. Speaking of birthdays, Jim Maloney will light 31 candles tonight 
as Maloney celebrates his birthday. Fastball for a strike from Denny McLean. 0-1. McLean only 27. His pitch from the side is a curveball outside. 1-1. One one. McLean will come over the top. He'll come three quarters, sometimes all the way from the side and crossfire. He's ready. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Fastball ripped on one hop to the shortstop, Hera. He's got it. Throw to first in time. And Hera handcuffed, was able to juggle that drive off McClellan's bat. Get a second chance at it. It was hit so hard that he still had time to throw out McMillan. Tony Camigliaro hitting 235 with four home runs. Steps in. John Stevenson to follow. McLean working quickly delivers. Swung on and fouled high out of play. That one sailing back. Down into the lower tier, skips around, through a few hands. The Angels and Washington, an off day tomorrow. Washington will host Oakland over the weekend, and the Angels go up to the Fens and meet the Boston Red Sox Friday night, Saturday afternoon, Sunday, Sunday's game televised. KTLA Channel 5 beginning at 10.30. The one-strike pitch, change inside, a straight change, one and one. Right back comes McLean from the side. It's bounced over his head behind second. Hera can't get it. Cullen comes up with it. His throw to first, not in time. The shortstop and second baseman crisscrossing behind the bag at second. McMullen came up with it, juggled for a moment, and then from the shortstop side, the second baseman firing off balance, but not in time. An infield hit for Canigliero. The first hit off McLean. And with one out, here's John Stevenson. Stevenson's average, 325. McLean from the set position, the pitch. Swung on line, drive, base hit center field. Canigliero has a chance to make third. He's on his way. Up with the ball is Maddox. Here comes the throw. Canigliero slides in safely. On a single to center field by John Stevenson. And for Stevenson... That breaks a string of 13 straight out. Canigliero able to motor to third, where an out can now score Tony C with a tying run. Canigliero with a late slide seemed to jam his foot into the bag as he made his slide, but he's all right. Stevenson at first base. Well, back-to-back singles by Tony C and Stevenson. Speaking of ending a batting slumps, how about Louis Aparicio? He finally got a hit after 44 straight outs. And of all the people in the American League that you would say, who is going to go into a slump like that? You wouldn't guess Aparicio. With his speed, he figures to get just some leg hits. Here's Sandy Alomar. He swings line drive, base hit center field. Canigliero scores. There goes Stevenson to third. Here's the throw by Maddox. It's cut off by the shortstop, and the Angels have runners at the corners, and the game is tied at one apiece. Alomar, last night... Suddenly seemed to find that hitting stroke. He singled twice sharply up the middle, and on the first pitch from McLean, lines the single to center field. His 20th RBI, and Sandy Alomar again leads the Angels and runs batted in. Tony C. scoring from third, and Stevenson around to third. And with one out, here's Clyde Wright with a chance to give his ball club the lead. Pitch by McLean. Breaking ball low and outside. Backhanded by Casanova. Infield playing back with the exception of third baseman Don Wirt. He's bagged high. He would come to the plate. The pitch. Swung on. Hit off home plate up the third baseline. Foul. Casanova gloves it as he moves into the fungo circle to the left. One ball, one strike to Clyde Wright, who has one RBI this year. Four hits and 31 at bat. That figures out at 129. McLean with four victories and eight losses. And although... Fans still find him uh, with a bit of glamour. Some of the reporters starting to get a little nasty regarding McLean. There goes Alomar. The pitch is high and inside. Casanova throws to third, but no play there. Alomar has his 12th stolen base. Casanova threw out Sandy last night, only the second time that that's been done this year. So Alomar with a stolen base is at second. Stevenson alertly, and as a catcher, he knew what Casanova might be thinking, bluffing the throw to second, try to pick him off third. He was hinged to the bag. 
Now the infield moves in. The pitch swung on line, drive, base hit, right field. Bittner plays it on one hop. One run scores. Here comes Alomar. Here comes the throw. Close play. Alomar is out of there. A line drive, base hit. And Bittner charging the ball, got it on the first top, and it was not too far from home plate at that point because Bittner was playing in for Clyde Rice. Got the perfect one-hop throw that got to Casanova, although it was to the first base side. But Casanova received the ball and then making a dive, was able to get the glove on the toes of Alomar as he made a slide to the plate. The Angels then get one run as Stevenson scores. Alomar raced 9-2 on Clyde Rice RBI single to right field. The Angels with four straight singles off Danny McLean take the lead 2-1 in the second. Repose the hitter. Curveball swung on and fouled out of play. Gogolowski begins to throw in the Washington bullpen. Clyde Wright has his second RBI of the year. Repose fly to left his first at bat. Clyde Wright at first. Howard playing behind him. So after McClellan hit the ball hard to the shortstop here for an out. And Conigli, Earl Stevenson, Alomar, and Wright single in order. The pitch high over the head of Ricky Pose with a breaking ball. One and one. McClain reading Casanova. There's no, not yet. Right with a safety lead, the pitch. High curveball. Again, he floated one up around the eyes of Repos. Two and one to Roger. Alomar got a good break from second base. But it was a matter of that line drive of Wrights getting out to Bittner in a hurry. One hop and relayed right back in to Casanova. And just in time to nip Alomar. The pitch swung on, popped up. High, high on the right side. Cullen comes down from second on the infield grass behind the mound, makes the catch. In the inning, two runs, four hits, no errors, and one man left. And after an inning and a half in Washington, the Angels two, the Senators one. Hello, small car expert. You're on the air. You want to turn your radio down, please? Oh, I'm sorry. A small car expert. Did you tell that last caller that there's a perfect Datsun for everyone? Yes, I did. Small car expert. You're on the air. I'm looking for a zippy two-door sedan. Try the Datsun 510. Goes from zero to 16 less than 14 seconds. But it's got to be comfortable. It is. Small car expert. Listen, I've had it with my small cars. Kids climbing on me, dog with a hot tongue panting all over the back seat. I need more room. I'd suggest the Datsun 510 four-door. Plenty of room and at a very low cost. How about a station wagon? Datsun makes a five-door wagon. Plenty of extras included in the purchase price. Does Datsun make a truck? Yep, the perfect pickup. Little Hustler, America's best-selling import truck. Listen, i got to take another call. Anything else? Yeah, is my husband with you? Drive the Datsun, then decide... Be sure to see the full line of Dotsons at Auto Expo Sports Arena now through June the 6th. Yeah. Two one, the Angels lead after an inning and a half. Washington will send Wirt, Cullen, and McLean to face Clyde right in the bottom of the second inning. Before we get to the action, let's pause for KCHV in Indio Palm Springs and all our Angel stations. Station identification. This is the Angels Radio Network. Thank you very much, gentlemen. This is KMND Radio in Mesa, Arizona. It's one minute before five o'clock. The Mesa Community College baseball game coming up this afternoon on KMND FM at 645. 645 at 93.3 on your dial. Now back to Washington. Don Word, little right-handed hitter. Waits as Clyde Wright winds his pitch. Strike. Fastball outside corner. Word batting 077. Also a slow start with the Senators. He has just two hits in 26 at bat. Outfield playing him to pull. Wright winds. Here it comes. Scrooge misses outside. One and one. Ward has been an enigma. He's had some great seasons and then some years where he couldn't come close to getting it yet. This one is ripped on. Two hops to Fregosi. He's up with it right in position. Throws quickly to first for the out. Ford out 6-3. Tim Cullen, the second baseman, batting 176. But Cullen in this series has been tough to keep off base. He had two walks and an infield hit in the first game. And last night, two walks and two hits. So he is 3-4. for four. 
and has been on base seven of eight times in the series. Right-handed batter. Chokes up on the handle, close stand, stands right up on the plate. Curve misses the outside corner, ball one. Denny McLean to follow. A 2-1 Angel lead. Right winds. The pitch. Strike with a fastball, one and one. Wright appears to have better rhythm than he did in New York, and Clyde complained about the slope of the mound at Yankee Stadium. He said he just never felt that he could get all of his timing together, that the drop-off leading to the plate was so quick that he seemed to be stumbling. This one is slicing foul down the right field line and way back into the seats. The count of ball and two strikes to Tim Cullen. Well, Jim Maloney celebrating his 31st birthday, but he is not the happiest man in the ballpark tonight in an angel uniform. That honor goes to Chico Ruiz. One-two pitch, Scroogey low. Chico visited the Mexican embassy today and has learned that a visa has been arranged and his parents will be able to visit him from Cuba. The two-two pitch by Wright. Curveball, check swing, roller up the third baseline. McMullen handles it at the cut of the grass. The throw to first, dug out by Spencer in time for the out. Ball took a funny bounce as it came to McMullen. He was looking for it right on the chalk line, and he had moved very, very quickly to his left to glove it as it took a angular hop to his left. Chico will fly out of Boston Sunday night to Mexico City, and within a couple of weeks, his parents, both around 65 years of age, will be able to fly out of Cuba through Mexico to Chico's home in San Diego. The pitch to McLean swung on and missed. It will be the first time that he has seen his parents in over 10 years, and he was so happy there were tears in his eyes. Right lines, one strike pitch. Curve, straight two calls. Big breaking curve that nibbled the outside corner. 0-2 to McLean. He's hitting 130, has three hits and 23 at-bats, but has driven in six runs. He has a triple. Where's number 17 in red on the back of his white flannel? No one on, two outs. Senator second inning. Two to one, Angels. And the two-strike pitch. McLean swings and lines at the right field. Canigli arrows right there, however, to stab it with one hand as he moved to his left. McLean lines out, and the Senators are out one, two, three in the second. After two at Kennedy Stadium, Angels two, Washington one. Say, here's a money-saving idea from the men at the side of the Chevron. Why don't you let them give you a worry-free head start on the holiday weekend and summer driving ahead by checking your tires right now. Then check their Memorial Day specials on quality Atlas tires now on sale. The Picron 2 Plus 2, for example. Two belts of fiberglass plus two plies of tough polyester cord. Or the HP, the road-hugging performance tire with extra miles built in. The Plycron, the popular full four-ply round tire. And for light trucks, the rugged traction truck tire. All on sale right now. And for better tire mileage, take advantage of the savings on Atlas shocks and Atlas load boosters. Remember, you can charge all Atlas tires and accessories on your Chevron National Travel Card. And also budget terms are available. So for unlimited driving pleasure and safety, take advantage of this limited time sale offer. Right now at all standard stations and participating Chevron dealers. Two-one, the Angels lead top of the third. And with more action, here's Don Well. Thank you, Dick. Alex Johnson leads it off, and Alex had walked his first time out. Here's a smash up the middle for a base hit. So Denny McLean throws the curve here to Alex and got it up in his eyes, and Alex Johnson went to work on it and slugs this one up the center. So Alex is one for one. The batter will be shortstop Jim Fergusi, and in the Jim's first trip to the plate, he had fouled out to the catcher, Casanova. And the on-deck man then will be Jim Spencer. So the Angels, two runs, five hits. Washington, one run, one hit, off flight right over the first two. A.J. away to his lead. He goes. The pitch is cut on and hammered foul up on the screen, and Johnson taking off in a hurry. Fast acceleration as McLean didn't pay too much attention to him. Well, Denny's next pitching assignment will be on Sunday. And he almost committed the block right there. He was very close to being in contact with the pitching rubber and the ball spilled out of his glove. And had he been in contact with it, Alex would have been awarded second base. Sidearm curve in for a strike and the count is on two. 
The Denny on Sunday will work against the Oakland Ball Club, and he will go against the sensational Vita Blue. It'll be the day game on Sunday. Alex wanders out to his lead. And the pitch to Fergosi swung on ground ball toward third. Picked up by Wirt, plays it to Cullen one on the first double play. So the Angels in a hurry have two away in the third. And the batter will be Jim Spencer. Jim hit one down the right field line that finally carried a foot or so into foul territory in the corner and Larry Bittner took care of it. It's 335 feet down the line here at Kennedy Stadium. 378 to right center out in front of the giant scoreboard. The pitch to Spencer way up over his head, ball one. 381 in the left center field and in the dead center field, 410 feet in this completely enclosed park. Spencer hitting 181, starting out the evening's play. The one nothing pitch. And there's the curve that breaks through for a strike. Let her high to make it one and one. Two down for the Angels. They lead it 2-1 here in the third. McLean, the hasty worker again. He started the rock into the motion, but then he saw Casanova make one other sign. The 1-1 delivery now off the curve. A line drive out of the right center field. That ball is settling in quickly for a base hit. It almost spins its way by Maddox, but... Kelly able to reach out to his right to glove it quickly. So Jim Spencer lays the line drive into right center. The Angels now have six hits. The batter will be Ken McMullen. Mack had grounded the short in the second. The Angels in double figures in the hitting department out here last night despite the loss. Quick curve in the dirt ball line. Wherever their team batting average, the same as when the series got underway. Team figure 222. 1-0 delivery. Missed inside ball two, and it's 2-0. and So the Angels with the base runner to begin with, Alex, and then Fergusi's double play. Sidearm curve, and it is low, ball three, 3-0. Off speed. Danny with a 3 nothing pitch. In for a strike, 3 and one McLean doesn't make much of a hesitation at the belt. When he comes down in that area, the hitter better be ready. Because he doesn't pause very long. Spencer, about five feet away from the bag at first. A little bit more now. The next one is cut out a miss. Good breaking ball here at 3 and 2 So McLean, who had not been staked to a run in his last two starts, Senators gave him one to work with in the first inning. And Denny trying to break out of a personal three-game losing streak. Three to delivery low with it, ball four. So Spencer goes to second base. Ken McMullen moves along the line to first base. The batter will be Tony Canigliero, and Tony with one out in the second. Half one over the mound out of the reach of McLean. Second baseman Cullen in cutting in front of the bag finally made contact with it. But by this time, he had carried well beyond second base, going toward short. So no chance to try to throw across his body to nail Tony Canigliero. And the infield hit was the gate opener there, John Stevenson. Then on a high fastball that McLean threw right up over the top. Hit a line drive to right center. Swing and a miss there by Tony on a slider for strike one. Sandy Alomar then followed with a base hit. And that two came on a high fastball to Alomar. That McLean again in dealing with Alomar, batting left-handed, he came right up over the top of the pitch, then fired right with his single in the right field, and Alomar was thrown out at the plate. One strike pitch hit him on the hands, and he runs us up toward the press box off to our right. Strike two. Nothing and two count on Canigliero. Runners at first and second. The walk to McMullen, the second issued by McLean this evening. Denny, who wears contact lenses, swims through here to Casanova for the sign and the two-strike pitch. Tony C. drives it high in the air out in left field. It may be playable. Billy's coming to the line just across the line and grabs this. About 10 feet foul for the out. So a sky-high fly ball down the left field line off the bat of Canigliero, and that takes care of things for the Californians. No runs, two hits, no errors, a pair left. And the score at the end of the top of the third, Angels 2, Washington 1. Green, green, green. 
against the Yankees, the fact that uh, Vida Blue is driving around Fun City today in a new baby blue Cadillac convertible. Compliments of owner Charlie Finley. In fact, the story had it that Charlie chipped in an extra $25 and purchased a personalized California license plate reading blue. And the brainstorm got a hold of Finley as he was watching his 21-year-old left-hander beat the Yankees 5-2 last night. And Vida said to Mr. Finley, uh, thank you, but he refused to get carried away. He said, I'm not really the type. I don't care what it is, just so long as it gets me to the ballpark and back. First delivery here to Toby Harrow, the leadoff man and shortstop, and Clyde throws it outside, ball one. And the thing worrying about, the worrying Vita Blue is whether he can afford to run the car on his salary of just over the minimum of $12,750. Pitch is cut on, ground ball to our chart. Going to be tough here for Pagosi, deep in the hole, strong throw to first base to get him. No, and now... Claims that uh, Jim Spencer was not in contact with the bag. Going to be short as the base hit for Toby Harris. And Jim Spencer vacated first base a little too early. And Jim Fregosi gunned the throw to first base. It appears that they had Toby Harris, but Jim trying to make that quick move away from the bag. And this spotted immediately, so Toby Harris is rewarded with an infield hit. The batter will be center fielder Ellie Maddox, and Ellie with the base hit his first time up. So that is only the second hit given up by Wright here in the last of the third now. Curve high and outside, ball one. Frank Howard, with that Turkish towel out, he's Frank's a very nervous individual and perspires a great deal. And of course the humidity reading being a little bit higher this evening than it has been first two games of the series. And uses that to wipe off those massive arms curve across the knees for a strike to make it one and one. And Frank taking care of that chore right now as he watches Clyde right here deal with Elliot Maddox. The outfield around slightly to the left for Maddox. Harris lead the pitch. Fastball, clipped foul. This will arc its way up into the, thir- into the second tier off to our right and then ricochet down below and the count goes to ball one and strike two. The strange part of the scheduling in the league after the big fracas at Comiskey Park, Chicago involving the White, the White Sox fan and uh, Don Buford of the Baltimore players and then a little cool-off period because they, even though Baltimore remained in town, they had an off day yesterday and they play again tonight. One-two pitch after the curve, smash back to right, picks it off, fires to Alomar high, but Sandy makes the force there, guns the throw to Spencer to complete the double play. So the Angels register one here. The ball was smashed hard by Elliot Maddox, but right on the line, back to Skeeter Wright. It stuck in the glove very quickly, and he managed to wheel and fire accurately to Sandy Alomar, and Sandy then on to Spencer, and the Angels have a twin killing of their own. Two down, here's Frank Howard. Frank walked in the first inning. Right delivery, off-speed curve, in for a strike to make it on one. And the manager of the Orioles, Earl Weaver, indicated that Don Buford would be in the Oriole lineup tonight. The one strike pitch tapped foul off the head of the bat to the right side of the plate. Strike two. The 
Larson and the delivery by Clyde. Curve, low and outside, ball one. One and two. So now Buford will be playing in left field tonight for the Birds in Chicago. But they had that little safety valve period, and now we'll see if it works for the off day, and a peculiar off day to come in the middle of the series. One, two, delivery now to Howard, goes after it, bounces it to the right side, and goes by the only man guarding the right side, Jim Spencer, base hit. So as the Angels stacked Alomar for Gussie and McMullen be playing second and third, Frank Howard going after a curve thrown by right and got it well out of the reach of Jim Spencer. Three hits given up by right. Here's the left fielder, Dick Billy. Dick Nelson points out it's getting a little bit murky here in the ballpark. The humidity has something to do with it. But it may have been our ride from the ballpark back to the uh, Washington Hilton Hotel last night that added to it. Dick Billings takes the strike over the outer edge, 0 and 1. Dick with a rental car. <laughs> and we thought it was going, truthful, it was thought it was going to catch on fire. And we still had about a mile to go before we got to the hotel. One strike delivery checks and takes it low, one and one. The fan belt slipped off. So now the car is overheating. <laughs> and then when the valve, when the valve started to pound out a little rhythm on the drum, it's got to be a little deafening, Dick. That was the candy camera scene though, as we went down the street to Washington. Here's the one one delivery now to Billings and it's foul back off the mask of Larry Daff. This combination really of steam and smoke coming out from under the hood and the funniest scene of all, we pulled up to a construction site as we were headed for Connecticut Avenue and there was a young man standing there with a flag to indicate whether you could pass it, whether cars could pass or not. They had this huge crane and the rear end of the crane was kind of turning itself onto the intersection so he had to hold up traffic from time to time. One, two, pitch. Howard goes. Ground ball hit up the middle but Fregosi goes for it and Jim's play will be to first base in time. So Billings grounds that short to first and the young man stood there with a flag and we were forced to stop because of the position of the crane, but he wanted us to go. He wanted to wave that thing because when he saw all the smoke pouring out from out of the hood, he thought certainly that he was going to go up with us. But we managed to finally get back uh, within range of the hotel, and, and uh, Dick Nelson did the job, I'll tell you that. He, he stood around and watched it smoke and steam. The first part was when he finally got it back to the hotel after it had stalled and died a couple of times, he couldn't get it to stop. He turned off the ignition and it kept buttering and boiling out all that smoke. <laughs> well, the third inning has stopped right here. No runs, two hits, no errors. A man left in the score at the end of three. Angels two, Washington one. You know, even though players have numbers on their uniforms, no player likes to be thought of merely as a number, and neither does an airline passenger. But word has got around that you are a number when you fly on a 747. Well, perhaps it is the case on some, but never on Continental, because Continental's intimate 747 is almost as warm and personal as a friend's home. And it's, of course, the little things that make it that way. The same gracious hostesses who greet you as you come aboard also serve you throughout the flight. The directors of passenger service are especially helpful people. You enjoy first-class legroom in all coach and economy seats, plus free lounges exclusively for coach and economy passengers. Continental 747s depart every day for Honolulu, leaving at 10 a.m. and 12.20 p.m. So see your travel agent or telephone Continental, the proud bird of the Pacific. John Stevenson, the batter, in the first delivery term, set a low for ball one, and then the next pitch to him, John rips one down the right field line. It's going to be fair in the corner, and this one bounces over the fence, the ground rule double for Stevenson. So John is two for two off McLean. Got the fastball the first time, the curveball here, so he's handled two pitches well. Here comes Sandy Alomar. So John Stevenson, who had been having his problems lately, and now coming up against the veteran right-hander, Danny McLean, has given him some personal punishment. Here's Alomar. Sandy, too, got the right over the top fastball from McLean for the base hit in the right center field in the second inning. And the pitch. Fastball low with this one, but in the strike zone across the A's to make it 0-1. So Alomar with a chance to get Stevenson home here. The Angels lead 2-1 in the fourth inning. And we'll bring you up to date in some of the other games as we go along here in the fourth. McLean works again. Alomar swings ground ball at Howard. Backhands goes to third. And the tag is made on Stevenson. So Frank Howard, the Washington Monument, picks this one up. A good backhanded shot. 
Stevenson going for third, and he gunned him down. And John Stevenson, a man with a very surprised look on his face as he came in standing, and he almost danced with Don Wirt. He did a little fast shuffle there as Wirt applied the tag, so on the field of choice, Alomar is at first base, and Stevenson is a gunner. And the batter will be angel pitcher Clyde Wright. In the first of two Cubs at Cincinnati, they're tied 2-2 at the end of six. That's hands against Wilcox. St. Louis to Pittsburgh getting underway. Cleveland against Walker. Houston being entertained by Atlanta tonight. Wilson against Reed. Toss over to first base. Alomar backs. Sandy picked up his 12 stolen base in the second inning. Philadelphia will be at San Diego. And Montreal at Los Angeles. Today the Mets beat San Francisco 5-2. Alomar goes to pitch inside. Throw through to second base. He guns him down. Sandy is right out of that. the call. There was a photo finish there. It appeared that Alomar had a beat. It was a strong throw by Casanova. I'll say that for the man working behind the plate. He didn't throw it off target. So one of baseball's greatest moments of excitement with Casanova up and firing and Alomar going, trying for his 13th stolen base. But he is out of there and the Angels have to away. Wright remains at the plate, and the next delivery to Clyde, low with it, ball two, two and oh. Two nothing pitch. Peter takes it high and tight, ball three. Joe Galuski gets up and throws with the bullpen again. Next delivery in for a strike, so it pops out of the mid of Casanova. Three and one. Flying from Los Angeles to Denver is quick and very easy on Continental with eight non-stop daily. 3-1 pitch. Right taking all the way for a strike three and two. Young man working in the bullpen, Billy Gogolowski, is about due for a rather long stretch of service activity. 3-2 pitch Clyde sails the fly ball shallow into right center field. Easing over for it, Larry Bittner, and Larry makes the catch to retire the side. So the Angels started it off with Stevenson's two-base hit. But the whole thing turns out to be another story for him here in the fourth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left out there. And the score at the end of the top of the fourth, Angels 2, Washington 1. Small Car Expert, you're on the air. I've been waiting for an hour to talk to you, and I'm calling from... Small Car Expert, go ahead, but don't be nasty. Hey, I've been listening to your show for weeks now, and you say there's a perfect Datsun for everybody. Yeah, what's your point, sir? I've got other calls. What about perfect economy? The Datsun 1200 two-door sedan. It's the little something. What's about perfect styling? You can't beat the something special, the Datsun two-door coupe. You can beat it, but you'd probably dead up the hood. <laughs> you get it? Small car expert. Uh, I was listening to that last guy. You know about a whole line of perfect Datsun? Uh -huh. Well, what about perfect convenience? The Datsun five-door station wagon. It's a kick to drive. For perfect performance. I'd have to say the Datsun 240Z, hottest-selling GT around. How about perfect comfort? The Datsun 510s, the two- and four-door sedans. Well, sounds like a perfect line, all right. You're, wait, you didn't ask about the Datsun pickup truck. Well, I don't care about the Datsun pickup truck. <laughs> Be sure to see the full line of Dotsons at Auto Expo Sports Arena now through June the 6th. Move to the last half of the fourth now with Larry Bittner, Paul Casanova, and Don Wirt. The men scheduled to face Clyde Wright. Tony C. in right field, Roger Repose in center, Repose working a step or two toward left center field and moving into a deeper position now, and then checks the wire fence behind him to find out where he is in relation to that. Alex Johnson straight away and left. Kerr bounced off the plate toward second baseman Sandy Alomar, a waist-high hop for Santos to toss the Spencer for the out, and Washington has one away on the first pitch. Walking up to the plate now, catcher Paul Castanova. Paul grounded out to Alomar in the first inning. One thing good to say, Jim Fregasi making some strong throws from short tonight. And he his accuracy has been good. And for Jim, that's been a struggle for him. The pitch. Curve in for a strike and it's on one, and understandably so too, even though you throw on the side before game action. Getting into the ball game and playing under game conditions and finding yourself your, yourself in different positions and trying to plant yourself properly to make accurate throws. And so 
Jim with uh, each game now. This seems to be an improvement for him. Next delivery is a little low and close for the curveball. The count is one and one. One down, nobody on. Angels lead two to one and Wright's next pitch. One one delivery lifted down the right field side. Could be a little problem here. Tony C coming on, can't get to it. Cats another wide turn and now the ball picked up by Caniglier. He tossed it back toward the infield and then lobs it off to Sandy Alomar. So a dying fly ball sliced that way by Casanova in for Washington's fourth hit. And the batter will be third baseman Don Wirt. Don and grounded to Fergusi in the second inning. Don Wirt with an 077 batting average. Ryan Hunter, the roadrunner, and the pitch to him, and he plants this one foul down the first base side. Like one. See, they've given Tim Cullen, the eighth man in the lineup, the nickname The Worm. I don't know why. Broken bat here by Don Worth. And for Bittner, what do they call him? Double I double T. Well, like you know, the spelling of his name, that would figure. D I I T T N E R. Casanova's lead at first, not a very long one. And the pitch curved, and he just slapped this one foul to the right of the plate. Spike two. Trying to complete that. Uh, Carry ride back from the ballpark last night with with J.C. Nelson, and when we finally reached a, a stoplight where there were three young men, and they were looking at all of this awful smoke pouring out of the hood of the car, and finally the one came over and we said, "Now everyone keep a straight face, as if we don't even know what's going on." And actually, you can't even see through the windshield. And he, one man shouted, and "Your engine's on fire!" And you turned to him and said, "No, we're we're charcoal broil- broiling some steaks for the Washington National Guard." And he just nodded as if to say, "Well, that's it," and we drove away. <laughs> It was really a candid camera story. The 0-2 pitch. Half swing here. Lobs the foul down the first base side. Spencer charging up. Jim makes a fine basket catch of this. Wheels around and fires to Sandy Alomars. Came over to cover at first base and Casanova gets back. So Jim Spencer with a good play on Don Wirt. And the batter will be second baseman, Tim Cullen. The one man, that construction worker, I can, you know, you still see the expression on his face when he's holding the flag to stop the car, but at the same time, you know he wants to wave that flag, wave you on, because he did three of the greatest double takes I've ever seen. He, he look at the car, and he look away, and they look at the car again, see some more smoke and steam curl out from under the hood. Mr. Cullen, that's it off the plate, could be a troublesome play. Stevenson out for it, guns the throw to first base, and it's there in time, and a fine piece of reception work on the part of Jim Spencer as he reached around Cullen to handle the throw. So for the Angels, or for Washington against the Angels, who did some good defensive work here in the fourth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, a man left, and at the end of four, it's the Angels two and Washington one. Does F-310 work? In the major test, motorists switched from the gasoline they had previously used to Chevron gasoline with F-310 for 2,000 miles. Many of them were women, and after the test, we asked some of them what they thought about F-310. Mrs. Donna Sievers. Seems to be driving better. It just made me feel more comfortable and more safe driving my car, knowing that I wasn't going to have to be stalled someplace. Mrs. Fairfax Walkup. The pickup was so very good. When you want to, for instance, get by a car, and you know that's another frightful point for women. And uh, it would just scoop by, you know. That worked fine. Does F-310 work? Mrs. Beverly Wagner. And uh, I told him that I, good news, I don't have to look for another car because it's performing beautifully. Mrs. Gertrude Westcott. It's a very smooth ride, and we are getting beautiful mileage. Miss Vicki Dutton. I trusted my car more. F310. It works. Moving along to the fifth inning of play, this is Don Wells with Dick Enberg and Dick Nelson, and a delight to have you with us this evening. Roger Repose will start off the fifth inning. Angels lead 2-1. Here's Dick. All right, Don, the first pitch by McLean is upstairs for breaking ball. Roger is flying to left and pops to second. The Angels, two runs, seven hits, one air. Washington, one run, four hits, and no air. 
McLean's one ball pitch. Repo swings and whips it foul. Down into the right field corner high, and that one might reach the second tier. Hits the facing of the second deck and then bounds down into the lower seat. Benedict's got to run in the first inning. A walk to Harris, single by Maddox. Howard walked to load the bases. And the run scored as Wright tried to pick uh, Maddox off second base, but the run would have scored anyway because the uh, next man Billings hit into a ground ball out. This one is full to the right side. Up with it is Cullen on to first for the out. Roger reaching outside and then pulling the ball to the right side, and Cullen has him for the first out in the fifth inning. Here's Alex Johnson. He extended his hitting streak to eight games with a single up the middle his last time at bat. He walked in the first inning. He's one for one. Pause for station identification. This is the Angels Radio Network. This is KMND Radio in Mesa, Arizona. Mesa Community College Baseball coming up at 645 on KMND FM 93.3 on your dial. McLean wastes no time. He's already thrown two fastballs inside, and the count is 2 0 to Alex Johnson. And McLean rocks right back into motion. The curveball is swung on a drive to center field, hit well, but Maddox is playing deep anyway, and he's there to put the leather around it for the second out. Alex got a hanging curveball, but couldn't pull it. Two away, and here's Jim Fregosi. He's fouled out, and he grounded into a 5 4 3 double play. On McLean and Wright. Both fast workmen, as Larry Knapp, our guest on the pregame show, indicated he likes to be behind the plate when two men such as McLean and Ryder at work because you don't have time to think. The ball is coming right up to the plate as soon as the pitcher gets it. McLean is ready. He winds. The pitch to McFergosi is swung on a high foul fly, hooked back into the lower deck to the left over to watch it fall in non-word. Two outs in the fifth inning. No one on. Two to one, the Angels lead. They got their two runs in the second and four straight singles. Conigliero, Stevenson, Alomar, and Wright. Alomar and Wright getting the RBI. They had two singles and a walk in the third, but in between, Fregosi uh, knocked into a double play and a leadoff double by Stevenson in the fourth. Fastball on the outside corner for a strike. Two strikes to Fregosi. Spencer would be next. McLean kicks and deals. Outside with a fastball. One and two. Then he barely has time to get his sign. And he comes right back. One, two. Fregosi swings and misses. Strike three. For Denny McLean, that is his first strikeout. And it comes to close out the fifth inning. The Angels are retired in order for the first time in the ball game. And at the halfway mark, and that's one four and a half innings in the book. It's the Angels two, the Senators one. Here's a reminder for all you ladies in our listening audience. Free tickets for A-Day with the ladies at Anaheim Stadium on June 28th are available now at all Vons Markets and Sears stores in Orange County. Angel players will explain and demonstrate some of the game's finer points for you ladies. And players' wives and children are staging a fashion show. There'll be fabulous prizes, and uh, we'd like to remind you that tickets are limited. They expect a big turnout. So be sure to get yours early for A Day with the ladies. The date is Monday, June 28th. Monday, June 28th. It'll be our pleasure to be there with the Angel Ball players and say hello to the female fans of Southern California. Clyde Wright has allowed four base hits, all singles. Maddox with a single in the first inning as the Senators got their only run on a couple of walks, a single, and an error. Gave up the single to Frank Howard in the third and an infield hit to Toby Hera in the third, but a double play, Maddox bouncing into a 1-4-3 twin killing. Kept the Senators off the board in the third and a one-out looping single by Paul Casanova in the fourth inning. Kenny McLean lined to right fielder Tony Canigliero his first time up. He'll be followed by... Toby Hera, and then Elliot Maddox. Right, trying to get his fifth win of the year. He's 4-4. and four. Our broadcast time Friday night from Boston, Fenway Park, will be 4-10 Pacific Daylight. And then day game Saturday and Sunday. Right, kicks the pitch. Swung on and missed. Fastball. McLean gets his swing. Not a bad hitter. Right. 
picks up the sign and is one strike pitch. McLean swings through another fastball. 0-2. One two to Denny McLean, leading off the Washington fifth inning. The Senators trail the Angels by a run, two to one. Right, ready is two strike delivery, swung on and missed. A low sinking fastball. McLean, the second strikeout victim. One out here is Toby Harrod to face Clyde Wright. Detroit at Minnesota tonight. Cleveland at Milwaukee. Those games just getting underway. Baltimore and Chicago the same. This afternoon, the Yankees defeated the Red Sox 6-1. Stan Bonson getting his third win. Sonny Siebert absorbing his first loss after nine straight wins. The big man for the Yankees, Bobby Mercer, he had two home runs. His ninth and tenth, both with no one on. Pitch to Hera. Curve ball high and away, ball one. Hera walked and scored in the first inning and was credited with an infield hit when his ground ball deep to short. And for Gossi's high throw, uh, pulled Spencer off the bag, and here are credited with a hit. Scrooge outside, 2-0. In the National League, St. Louis at Pittsburgh, Cleveland against Walker. Doubleheader in Cincinnati and Chicago, and the Reds are tied 2-2 in the seventh inning. First game, Houston at Atlanta, Philadelphia at San Diego, Montreal at Los Angeles later. The Mets beat San Francisco this afternoon, 5-2. Harris swings and sends a high fly ball to center. Repost coming in for it. He's there and makes the catch. Two outs in the Senator fifth inning. Here's center fielder Elliot Maddox. He singled the right and grounded into a double play. In the game at San Francisco, Art Chamsky hit a home run. Williams in relief got the win. Marshall the loser. Juan Marshall now eight and three. The Dodgers, as they host Montreal tonight, have a chance to gain some ground on the high-flying Giants. First pitch to Maddox is out of the strike zone, ball one. It'll be Carl Morton, the right-hander, going for Montreal at Dodger Stadium against Bill Singer. Bill is three and nine. And Willie Davis going to for his 25th straight game to get a base hit. Maddox fouls this one back on the ground. One and one. where Charles Finley has given his young left-handed pitcher Vita Blue a powder blue Cadillac to drive. The 1-1 pitch. Ground ball to short. Fregosi has an in-between hop. Fires the first for the out. Clyde Reich works an easy 1-2-3 fifth inning. And after five in Washington, Angels 2, Senators 1. Resurfaced the infield portion of Kennedy Stadium. And we're set to go in the sixth inning with Jim Spencer leading off for the Angels, Ken McMullen, then Tony Canigliaro to try to add to the Angel lead. It's 2 1. Denny McLean into the windup. The right hander delivers the curveball upstairs, ball one. McLean has had trouble with the slow curve. Looks at his hand as if to say, Now, what are you doing to me? As that high overhand curveball has not been breaking down, it's been hanging up off the bill of the helmet. 1 0 pitch. Change is in for a strike. A straight change at the knees. One and one. Dispenser, who is one for two in the game. The Angels with seven hits off McLean in the first five innings. But only the two runs when they put four singles together in a row. Low with this pitch. Two and one. Oakland A's are idle tonight and tomorrow night and will open a weekend series here in Washington Friday night. Two-one pitch by McLean. Swung on and fouled on the ground to Fred Kenny, the first base coach. By Spencer. And congratulations.
congratulations to fine young basketball talent, Curtis Rowe, who has signed a half-million-dollar contract with the Detroit Pistons. We wish the former UCLA All-American the very best in his NBA career. 2-2 pitch. Swung on, ground ball, off the glove of Howard, picked up by Cullen. He goes to McLean for the out. What a play. hit a low skidding one hopper wide of first. Howard with that long reach got his glove on it. Deflected it to the second baseman Cullen who was coming that way anyway to the left to back it up. Rolled right to Cullen and McLean alertly covered first base and the 3-4-1 put out. Rob Spencer of a base hit. Here's Ken McClellan. He has walked and was out on a hard ground ball to short. McLean delivers from the side a curve ball that sweeps outside. Ball one. Lane comes right back, 1-0. Oh. Fastball low, 2-0. Oh. Man of many speeds and many deliveries, Sandy McLean. As a sign, his two-ball pitch. McMullen checks the swing and cost him a strike. Fastball. 2-1. Still a lot of McMullen fans here in Washington. He was very popular while playing for the Senators. 2-1 pitch. Low, three and one. And Mack now, the home run leader with the Angels with eight. Sandy Alomar has regained the RBI top spot on the Angel Ball Club with his 20th tonight. Three, one pitch. McMullen swings and sends a one hopper to work deep at third. He has it long throw in time. Two away. Tony Canigliaro, an infield hit behind second and scored, and he fouled out to left. Stuart Tony's kid brother, Billy Canigliero, has moved into the top ten in the American League batting derby. Billy C. just under 300 with a 297 mark and 49 base hits. That's as many as Alex Johnson started with tonight, and he's the Angels' best. McLean delivers. Tony C. sends a high hopper over. Works at deep at short as Hera. He throws. Not in time. And it was close. Hera showing quite an arm because he actually took two steps on the outfield grass and when he picked the ball out of his glove, looked at it before he threw as if he had plenty of time. Had he braced quickly and thrown across, he might have gotten Tony C on a most difficult play. That's about as much range. And they said that was uh, the one negative in Hera's playbook that he did not move that well side to side, but he covered a lot of ground and with that great arm almost threw out Canigliero, who has his second infield hit. With two outs, Canigliero at first base. John Stevenson has a single and a double, two for two. Looks at a fastball for a strike. The Angels lead two to one on eight hits. Twice as many as the Senators have collected off flight right. We're in the sixth inning, and Tony C is at first base with two outs. One strike pitch. Stevenson fouls it off the head of the back. Cues it toward Sandy Alomar, the on-deck hitter. The small car expert has asked me to invite you to come in. Let him help you pick the perfect Datsun for you. Remember, he's the expert, your Southern California Datsun dealer. See him soon. Two strikes on John Stevenson. A couple of exchanges of baseballs between Casanova, plate umpire Larry Knapp, and the pitcher McLean. He's found one that he likes, and with two strikes, he walks behind the pitching surface. Ken wheels his arm once, pulls up the sleeve on his pitching arm, and now right foot on the front edge of the rubber. Canigliero leads. Here's the pitch. Inside with a slider. One and two to count. Angels two. Washington one. McLean's one-two pitch. Stevenson looks at a high curve again. That high overhand curveball does not get down into the strike zone. Two balls, two strikes. Outfield playing Stevenson toward left field. The pitch. Bounced off the plate toward second. McMullen has it on the second hop. On to first base for the out. So Cullen to Howard for the final out in the sixth inning. No runs a hit, no errors, and a man left. To the home half of the sixth inning. With a score, Angels 2, Washington 1. And with a word from the Proudbird, 
your time. Well, there's always a wonderful feeling in the air when a team comes home after a successful road trip. In fact, there's always something wonderful about any kind of homecoming, including when you go back to your old hometown, see the place you came from, and the people who live there. Well, this summer, come home with Continental Airlines and bring the family. Continental makes it easy with family fares that help take the high cost out of family flying. So this summer, why not take the family to see the family? Show your youngsters where it was happening when you were their age. Continental certainly makes it easy and economical to fly back to Chicago or Kansas City, Denver, Dallas, Houston, Seattle, or dozens of other hometowns. Simply call Continental's partner in getting things done for you, your travel agent, or call Continental. And ask about Continental's low, low family fares. And then come home this summer on Continental Airlines, the proud bird with the golden tail. It sounds like the thing to do, and of course, uh, so many of the folks in the Midwest, the Southwest, Northwest, who uh, eagerly await notice from you that you'll be visiting the grandparents, the aunts and uncles during the summer months, and we hope when you make your vacation plans, you do think first of Continental Airlines, because they'll take a good, good care of you. And that's especially true of the family, with not only the lovely hostesses in the cabin, but the director of passenger service, it gives an extra hand, and perhaps in many ways a, a man in the cabin more sensitive to to the female passenger and giving them special attention, as well as to the kids. So, fly Continental this summer. Here's a man who can make that horse hide fly. Big Frank Howard, the shift on McMullen, Fregosi, and Alomar all on the shortstop side. Spencer alone on the right side, and right winds the pit. Outside with a fastball. For the first time in the series, last time up, Howard shot the ball to right field for a base hit, taking advantage of the lack of defense on that side of the diamond. He walked in single tonight. A 2-1 Angel lead the pitch. Low with a fastball. 2-0. The attitude of the Angel pitchers almost to the men is they will not let Frank Howard beat them, which means, in this case, that if Howard is going to get a base hit, he's going to have to swing a Clyde Wright pitch or he will be walked. Wright lines. He has 2-0 delivery. Swung on, bounced off the glove of Wright to the second base side. Alomar up with it, throws to first and gets him. A fine play. Wright, as the ball was shot high over his head, leaped, got the fingertips of his glove on it, and deflected it into a more difficult play for Alomar, who had to move from 10 feet on the shortstop side of second to about 15 feet on the second base side and gloved the ball, stretching as far as he could to his left, and then on the run, whipped his throw to Spencer just in time to get the lumbering Howard, who was moving up the line. One, four, three on the put out. Here's Dick Billings. He's over two on a pair of ground balls. Right-handed hitter, the pitch by right. Change, just swung on, high hopper, right to Ken McMullen at third. He has it, throws the first two away. You said it, this game is moving along. Two outs in the sixth inning, and we've played about an hour and 15 minutes. The hitter will be right fielder Larry Bittner. Bittner needs a base hit to extend his inning streak. He's hit safely in the last six games. He has struck out and grounded out. Doesn't look quite as smooth against the left-handed right as he has against the right-handed pitching in this series. Right delivery. Outside with a fastball. Paul Casanova would be next. Oakland coming to town. They set a new uh, team record for games in which uh, they've hit at least one home run. Swung on, bounced by the mound, near the bag. Alomar has it on the run, on to first for the out. And there go the Senators in the sixth inning. Is right, breezing along, retires them in order for the second straight frame. And after six at Kennedy Memorial Stadium, the score remains the Angels two, Washington one. Hello, small car expert. You're on the air. You want to turn your radio down, please? Oh, I'm sorry. A hey, small car expert, did you tell that last caller that there's a perfect Datsun for everyone? Yes, I did. Small car expert, you're on the air. I'm looking for a zippy two-door sedan. Try the Datsun 510. Goes from 0 to 60 in less than 14 seconds. But it's got to be comfortable. It is. Small car expert. Listen, I've had it with my small cars. Kids climbing on me, dog with a hot tongue panting all over the back seat. I need more room. I'd suggest the Datsun 510 four-door. Plenty of room and at a very low cost. How about a station wagon? Datsun makes a five-door wagon. Plenty of extras included in the purchase price. Does Datsun make a truck? Yep, the perfect pickup. Little Hustler, America's best-selling import truck. Listen, i got to take another call. Anything else? Yeah, is my husband with you? Drive the Datsun, then decide... 
Be sure to see the full line of Datsuns at Auto Expo Sports Arena now through June the 6th. Angels 2, Washington 1, into the seventh inning and more play. Here's Don. All right, Rich, Sandy Alomar leads it off. Sandy 1 for 2 and a swing and a miss on a McLean fastball for strike 1. So McLean picking up in pitching strength as he has moved along in this game. And these two men just a complete uh, pitching matchup just as it was billed for this evening's game with the Angels leading 2-1, a very fast game. A shot out of the left center field. Maddox is there, however, and just makes a couple of easy steps off to his right to handle the line drive off the bat of Alomar. So one down, that will bring up Angel pitcher Clyde Wright. And Clyde on a humid evening, taking the towel, wiping away some of the perspiration. And now about ready to get up and make his move toward the plate. He'll be followed by Roger Repose. We have a little fog in the Washington area this evening, and apparently that's what we have. But some of it drifts into Kennedy Memorial Stadium. First delivery outside at the letters for ball line. And the Anacostia River only a few steps away from this ballpark. 1-0 delivery, fastball high and tight ball 2, 2-0. Five for the base hit and an RBI on the second. And the most important one for the Angels, that checks Stevenson across, and that's the run. The Angels lead by right now. Next delivery, curveball high, ball three. McLean a little bit upset with plate umpire Larry Knapp, so Denny did not immediately accept the return throw from Casanova. He just spun around and turned his back toward home plate. Working back with a 3 0 pitch through this high ball four. So Clyde is on, and the batter will be Roger Repose. Earlier in the season, and I think it was at County Stadium in Milwaukee, when Denny had a no hitter going, and he had a for about five, and then he got into a verbal sparring match with a plate umpire on a couple of calls and he also gave up a few base hits in the inning and the next thing he knew he had given up four runs in the inning and then he had some additional words and Lane was tossed out on the spot but he had a no hitter going for five innings Propose drives it foul up on the screen for strike one and Denny a guy with a, a kind of an interesting boiling point you don't know whether to read it low or read it high it depends upon the day Propose has gone over three against him. Popped up, grounded out, and five shot of the left field. Fastball high and tight, one and one. Alex Johnson in the on deck area. So the Angels trying to pick up something additional for Clyde Wright, and Clyde starting it off here with one out and the base on balls. They claim with a one one pitch. Off speed curve, a little bit low, ball two, two and one. And there a pitch that was in a questionable period, and McLean making a motion to Larry Knapp. And so to indicate that you feel it was low, and Knapp indicates I didn't only feel it was low, I saw that it was low. Here's that fastball, that sinking fastball, and repose right over the top on the pitch, and the count is two and two. Frank Howard playing behind, slide right at first base. With the left-hander repose up, and Howard rather close to the chuck. 2-2 delivery, and repose with a swing and a miss. Bell high fastball here. So Repose is 0 for 4 against McLean, and that will bring along Alex Johnson. McLean is really something. And you watch him pitch, and you think that uh, all of a sudden he's hit a flat spot, that it looks as though he doesn't have much in the way of stuff. And then he turns right around, and when it's needed, then he turns it on. In this case, he... He uh, delivered two fastballs, a sinking fastball, and, and came up then to repose with the next one and got and got him on strikes with good, quick stuff. Here's Alex Johnson. The pitch. A.J. takes the fastball close, ball one. Alex one for two. He started out at 258. He walked in the first, and then came the base hit in the third. Then a fly ball to center field in the fifth inning. Alex with a swing and a miss here. This looks like a slider thrown by McLean. He threw it hard to count one and one. And he does possess a very good slider. Now we have uh, Billy Gogoliski and Joe Grisenda throwing in the bullpen for Washington. He's swinging him up here, and again he threw some heat to count one and two. Ball on strike two on A.J. 
for Gussie in the odd deck area, wondering if he will have a chance here in the seventh inning. Whipped two away of the pitch. Alex almost hit with it. In fact, I guess it did. It got him. Tried to jump away from it, but it caught the uniform. So Alex tosses the bat aside and wanders up the line. Apparently, they've got him on the left forearm. Left forearm or left wrist. So Alex now moving to first base. And on to second base goes Clyde right, And for Gussie, will have a chance. tonight, 0 for 3. McLean has been able to handle him well. He fouled him out to Casanova, got him on a double play, and then in the fifth inning struck him out. Two down, the pitch to Fregosi. Low and away with it, ball one. And again, McLean fired this one hard to Fregosi, but missed the target. Slide right at second. Alex Johnson with an enormously long lead at first. The pitch slider low and outside, 2-0. Oh. So Denny just huffs and puffs a little more on the mound as he has worked behind for Gossi, 2-0. Ready in the delivery. Breaking ball, a little low with it. And now McLean hollering in to Larry Knapp about the call. And so from long range, he and Knapp with a word exchange and the count is 3-0. Of course, so frequently, uh, the Angels against McLean, we have seen this happen. 3-0 pitch. And Knapp says you missed with that one. Ball four. So the Angels have the bases loaded two away. Denny's history against the Angels. And it's held true with other teams. But and now we're going to have a little quiet down period of the mound as Sid Hudson comes out and Frank Howard goes out. And Paul Casanova has already gone out. And he has already been the first to admonish Denny. Look, don't get yourself all upset because... Uh, I say, I don't know exactly what has occurred against other teams, but as long as McLean has been in this league and pitching against the Angels, it's been that way, even though he, in his overall, his one and loss record against the California club shows a plus, not much of a plus, however. But so frequently, he has managed to get himself upset because of the man working behind the plate. Things wouldn't go right for him in a couple of pitches. And perhaps the workman that he is and the craftsman that he is, he feels uh, in a very deserved way he should get these pitches. But... In the case of Larry and App, Larry saying no on the four deliveries made to Fergusi. So Jim is the man who loads the bases. And the bases have become loaded because of two walks and a hit batsman. The batter, Jim Spencer, and Jim is one for three. So the Angels with a big chance here in the seventh inning, despite the two outs. Deep on the right side, Howard and Cullen. Runners away to their leads, and the pitch by McLean, and Spence takes the fastball high, ball one. And there was a pitch he couldn't uh, question Larry Knapp about his decision on that particular delivery. Well inside to Spencer and riding high. Pumps it up again and the 1-0 delivery and Spence hits the fly ball. It's going to be shallow in right field. Cullen is going out for it. The second baseman backs out under it and takes care of it. And the Angels leave the bases loaded. For the Californians then, no runs, no hits, no errors. Three men left, and the score at the end of the top of the seventh, the Angels 2 and Washington 1. You know, to keep your car's engine running young, it's important to change the oil regularly. And if you have any doubt as to how often that should be, check with your standard Chevron dealer. He'll recommend the best oil change schedule for your particular make and model car. To do everything you can for the life of your car's engine, you should also make sure you're using a superior Chevron motor oil. Chevron motor oils are designed to deliver top performance for your money. And that means oils you can count on. In the winter cold, to cling to your engine's vital moving parts for faster starts and smoother running. And oils tough enough to hold up under the hottest freeway driving. So whatever Chevron oil you use, Chevron Custom, Chevron Supreme, or Chevron Special, you can expect top performance. Keep your car running young. Change the oil as often as your standard Chevron dealer recommends. And make sure it's a change for the better. A change to Chevron Motor Oils. Only at standard stations and Chevron dealers. We move along now to the last half of the Sabbath inning, and we're going to pause right here and allow KPRO and San Bernardino and Riverside and all of our network stations to identify themselves. This is the Angels Radio Network. You're listening to the Big 1510. <laughs> Command Radio. KMND, Mesa's own. 
It's one minute after six in Mesa. So the last of the seven. And here comes catcher Paul Casanova, then Don Wirtz, and then Tim Cullen. Clyde Ryan has stacked the Senators on four hits. Has pushed them aside in order in the fifth inning, and again in the sixth. Lined on the pitch on the way to the right-hander Casanova, and it's outside, ball one. Casanova with a fly ball, just a soft fly ball single, down the right field line in the fourth inning. Right back with a one nothing pitch. Casanova fouls off the fastball, and it's one and one. Single by Elliot Maddox in the first inning. There was an infield hit by Toby Harris in the third, and a single by Frank Howard in the third, and then the fly ball single by Casanova. tomorrow, and will travel tomorrow morning on to Boston. Ready themselves for that weekend series. One, two, delivery is Kurt. He came around. Casanova stumbled across the plate in pursuit of this pitch and trying to hold his swing and couldn't. So on a breaking ball by Clyde Wright that he kept down to Casanova. He gets him on strike. He'll bring up third baseman Don Wirt. For Clyde Wright, that is his third strikeout. Wirt over two tonight. Grounded to short. And then on a good fielding play by Jim Spencer. Jim got him on his top foul in the fourth inning. pitch. Curve, and he whacks this one toward short. Two big hops to Fregosi, and the gun-like throw to first base for the out. Down word is gone. That'll bring up second baseman Tim Cullen. Now he has some noise off in the distance, and it appears that either the natives are getting restless, or there's a train traveling down the Anacostia River that it might be a little in some of the preliminary sounds to a storm here in the Washington area. Deliver to Cullen, fastball over the inside, it's for strike on one. Sounds a trifle like some rolling thunder in the background and thunder showers, scattered thunder showers expected tonight. One strike delivered. And Skeeter turns this over and throws it low and away, one and one. Hookup it is then. Clyde right against Danny McLean. Out one and one. Right handed Tim Cullen. There it is. Cullen takes the fastball for a strike. One and two. Just ran that right down through there. Cullen after grounding out to McMullen. And then the good fielding play by both men involved. Catcher John Stevenson and Jim Spencer on one that he chopped out in front of the plate in the fourth inning. One two offering by Clyde with two down and nobody on. Kerr, broken back, ground ball to short. Fregosi handles it there. There's the throw, and it's there in time. The right hands him in order again for the third inning in a row. With nothing across the score at the end of seven. Angels two, Washington one. There. When you say that, you've said a lot of things nobody else can say. Budweiser Challenge. Quote, in Brewing Bud, our choice is to go all the way. We hope beer matters enough to... Let's get back to that. All right, down the first pitch to Ken McMullen. is high and inside with a fastball, ball one. Mack in the ball game is grounded hard to short. Walked and grounded to third, 0 for 2. The Angels, two runs, eight hits. Washington, one run, four hits. The pitch, wider outside, 2-0. And, oh. and they're bowling upstairs now. A lot of rumbles and the lightning sparks start to flash in the sky overhead. The pitch. 
Check swing roller that is glove backhanded by McLean on his knees. He throws the first for the out. McLean able to skid to his right and backhand the ball and then just turn on his knees and throw to Howard for the out. Tony Canigliero, a couple of infield hits and three at bat. There was rain forecast, thunder showers for tonight. And unless they're missing to the south and north, it appears that uh, we're bound to have some rain before this ball game is over, despite the fact that it's moving along at a very fast pace. Just a little over an hour and a half old, and we're in the eighth inning with one up. Tony C., two for three. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Conegliero with an infield hit with one out in the second. Then Stevenson followed with a single. Alomar singled one run in, and then Wright singled in the second. That's the ball game as far as the Angels are concerned. Four straight base hits. On Wright single with runners at third and second, Alomar was thrown out at the plate by right fielder Larry Bittner. John Stevenson next. Clyde Wright has retired 11 men in a row. And since the third inning, Denny McLean has allowed only two base hits, although the Angels loaded the bases on two walks and a hit batsman in the seventh, but Spencer foul, uh, popped up to end the inning. High and away with a hard slider, one and two to Tony C. Canigliero, understandably very pleased about heading back to Boston to see all of his family and friends over the weekend. One-two pitch. Swung on, and here comes the rain, and it's coming down in sheets. There wasn't that first drizzle. It's just all of a sudden the skies open, and all the players and umpires are sprinting for cover. Oh, my. Incredible. There was not the first drop, and all of a sudden it was raining a torrential downpour. The fans caught down in the lower box seats. They're scrambling up the aisles, but many of them will be soaking to their skins before they make it underneath the overhang. Incredibly quick shower. The ground screw trying to get the tarp out onto the field as the rain just swept in. I think one other time in here in Washington it rained just like this with no advance warning at all. There wasn't that preliminary drizzle and a few drops here and there to warn of its it's storm, but this time it's just one moment dry, the next moment as hard as you'd ever want to see it rain. The tarp now is being moved out across second base area in the outfield, and they'll try to drag that out over the infield dirt. Already it's rained so hard there are puddles forming on the infield dirt. That's how hard it rained in so short a time. So in the eighth inning, with Tony Canigliero up in the count one ball and two strikes, the heavens have begun to cry, and they are crying big tears. And the lightning cracking all around, and the thunder rolling, and a true summer storm in Washington, D.C. The tarp has covered the second base side of the infield, but the third base and shortstop areas remain uncovered. And now, men hustling as hard as they can on this ground screw to try to get the cover pulled it across the mound area and now to the third base foul line. These are the kinds of storms usually that end as quickly as they begin. Lightning and thunder close by. That one was a near hit. That was a giant sycamore tree that fell that time. This is, this, this is a, in this section of the country, uh, I don't know, you man, I guess, to refer to them in different ways across the country, but it's really a squall is what it amounts to. It. And when they indicated the scattered thunderstorm, thunder showers for this evening, this being the first one that we have experienced, and uh, it may possibly let up before too long. Oh, look at that, folks. That, that ran straight down to the bridge over the river. And judging from the time interval, it had to be close. He should join us late. Here's the story of the ball game. In the first inning, the Senators got their only runoff, starter Klein Wright. Here are the leadoff man walk. Elliot Maddox followed with a single to right, and Howard walked below the bases. With the bases loaded, no one out. The Angels tried to pick Maddox off second base, but the throw hit Maddox, skidded away, and Harris scored from third. That's the only run. The Angels took the lead in the second after McMullen smashed a low hopper to short and was thrown out. Canigliero beat out a hit up the middle. 
Stevenson single to center. Alomar drove in one run with a single to right center, and Clyde Wright single to right field got in the other. A two to one ball game. Since the second, the pitching of Wright and McLean negating any offensive thrust by either club, although the Angels did have the bases loaded two outs in the seventh on a couple of walks and a hit batsman when Spencer popped out. And for the Senators, their only serious threat came in the third, an infield hit, but then the double play by Maddox and Howard singled, and Billings made it out to end it. Since then, Wright has allowed one hit, and he has retired the last 11 men in a row. And it is raining very, very hard at Kennedy Stadium in Washington. The field is now covered, but we're going to have a considerable delay. Sitting down to the bench here in the Washington dugout before the game with Ted Williams, and one of the Washington Stadium police sergeants came over and said, and Williams turned to him and said, what about the forecast for tonight? And the sergeant said, it will not rain tonight because the wind is coming from the wrong direction. So Ted turned to me and he said, well, that takes care of it. And I said, I, there's only one thing about it, Ted. I think he's the same police sergeant. When we were back here in that television date, it was the last year, uh, that uh, we had the same situation. And uh, this could have been the same man who said, oh, don't worry, no, no rain for today's game. And all of a sudden, we were inundated here. In fact, both dug, dug, uh, dugouts were flooded on that occasion. So we will uh, warn all of our network stations now to uh, get ready to fill on a local basis. But first of all, a reminder for all of you about uh, your plans for the 4th of July. You know, now's the time to make your reservations for another fireworks extravaganza. We're having one of nature's best here tonight. But this one will be at Anaheim Stadium following the Angels' 6 p.m. game with the division-leading Oakland A's. And last year's show was a sellout, so we suggest that you obtain your tickets early. Enjoy both events, game and fireworks, at the regular game price. So no change in the price cost. And tickets are on sale now at the Anaheim Stadium box office, open 9 to 5 daily, at Mutual and Liberty Agencies, and at UC Banks in Orange County. And to give our station some additional time, we'll check over the scoreboard. Detroit will be at Minnesota tonight. Cleveland plays at Milwaukee, Baltimore at Chicago. And today, the Yankees defeated Boston 6-1. Stan Bonson, the winner, and Sonny Siebert, Losing his first after a 9-0 record, and Bobby Mercer hit homers numbers 9 and 10. St. Louis at Pittsburgh tonight. First game of two Cubs at Cincinnati. The Cubs defeated Cincinnati 6-3. The win to Hands, the loss to Wilcox. The Banks hit his first homer. That came in the seventh with two on. May had his tenth in the ninth with nobody on. So that is the first of two. Houston leads Atlanta 1-0 at the end of five. Wilson against Reed. Philadelphia will be at San Diego. Montreal and the Dodgers play in Los Angeles. And today at Candlestick, the Mets beat San Francisco 5-2. Williams, the winner, 1-1. One and, one. and Marischal, the loser, 8-3. And, and Shansky hit a bases empty homer in the eighth inning. Rain still driving down here at Kennedy Memorial Stadium. And all we can do now is just settle back and wait. Last night, a power failure for some 32 minutes. So we'll see what sort of a rain delay we have this evening and uh, if they're able to continue the game at all. As it stands right now, the Angels lead it 2-1. And they have two runs, eight hits, one error. And Washington, one run, four hits, and no error. So that's about all the information we can give you from Washington. Dick Nelson will keep in check with you along the network line and keep you posted as to the way the weather goes here in Washington, D.C. So that's it for the moment. This is the Angels Radio Network. Just minutes ago from Kennedy Memorial Stadium in Washington, Larry Knapp, the senior umpire of this crew, came out and they took one look at things and said, let's forget it for the night. Earlier, he had come out with one of his fellow umpires. They pulled the tarp halfway out the infield. And at that time, Knapp gave an indication the infield was still in good shape. So uh, they were just going to see that if perhaps they could take the tarp off and we could continue this one, though the outfield has to be quite a quagmire. And then with the infield, with the uh, tarp pulled halfway off, all of a sudden it started to rain harder. Now it's let up again, and it seems to be just a very fine drizzle. But uh, you have to consider the outfield as well, and uh, it's a of course, with a shadow out there, the indication, too, the automobile that brings in pitchers from the bullpen areas and the tracks uh, being left, and muddy tracks indeed, as he works around the warning path itself and now goes out through the gate in the right field corner. So Larry Knapp, the senior man behind the plate, has said, let's forget it, and the Angels win it in the eighth inning as the rains came. So Jupiter Pluvius has provided an Angel victory, and perhaps this is what the California club needs to get things rolling in the proper way as Clyde Wright picks up his fifth win against four defeats. The Angels win it 2-1 with two runs, eight hits, one error, and eight men left. Washington, one run, four hits, no errors. They have stranded four men, and it took an hour and 37 minutes of game time 
Denny McLean, the loser. And Denny was pacing up and down in the Washington dugout earlier as the rain continued to fall. And uh, McLean now winds up with his ninth loss against four victories. And the attendance on this rainy night, 3,606. We hope to have Clyde Rice, the winning pitcher on Angel Report, as our guest, and that will follow in just a moment. <laughs> 